Welcome. In this video, we shall discuss the standard form of the simplest method. In order to make use of the simplest method to solve the linear programming problem, we need to make sure that our problem is written in the standard form, and the following three rules are required. First, we need to make sure that the right-hand side of each of the constraints cannot be a negative value. Next, we want to make sure that all the constraints must be stated as equations. Third, all the variables are restricted to non-negative values. And in case that our problem has not yet written into the standard form, we should reformulate our linear programming problem so that these requirements are achieved. And as long as these three requirements are fulfilled, we say that the constraint set is in standard form. In the following, we will mention how we should change our constraint so that it meets each of these requirements. First, we can deal with the requirements 1, which states that the right-hand side of any constraint equation must be non-negative. In case we come across a constraint which has a negative right-hand side coefficient, we can simply multiply the whole constraint by negative 1 to both sides so that the right-hand side coefficient becomes positive again. For example, if we come across this constraint where the right-hand side coefficient is negative 12, then we can multiply the whole inequalities by negative 1 to make negative 2x1 plus 3x2 greater than or equal to 12. In order to fulfill requirements 2, we need to make sure that all the constraints are written in equation form. In case it is not, then we usually will add some additional variables to the constraint so that the constraint now can be written as an equation form. But we need to bear in mind that we also need to fulfill requirement 3, that is, all the variables should have non-negative values. This includes the decision variables and also additional variables added to the constraint in order to fulfill all the requirements into a standard form. Now, let us discuss how to make sure that the constraint fulfill requirements too. That is, all constraints must be stated as equations. Suppose we come across a, a constraint which is 2x1 plus 3x2 less than or equal to 50. That is, we have a constraint which with the inequality sign less than or equals to. In this case, we would like to add an additional variables to the left-hand side so that this constraint can be written as an equation again. In this case, we can add an additional variable which is called s1 into the left-hand side so that we get 2x1 plus 3x2 plus s1 equals to 50 where s1 is greater than or equals to 0. If we have some additional variables added to the constraints, these variables should also fulfill the requirements 3, that is, all variables are restricted to non-negative values. We can see in this case that if the s1 is greater than 0, then it means that we have 2x1 plus 3x2 less than 50. Whereas if s1 is equal to 0, then we will have 2x1 plus 3x2 equal to 50. Therefore, in both of these cases, the original inequality 2x1 plus 3x2 less than or equal to 50 is fulfilled. When we add a variable to inequality having the less than or equals to symbol, the variables added is called a slack variables. Therefore, usually we denote it with the letter S. Next we may come across constraints with greater than or equals to sign. That means the left-hand side of the constraint is more than or at least equals to the right-hand side value. For example, 
x1 plus x2 greater than or equals to 25. Imagine that a factory produces aeroplanes, and this year they receive an order of 25 aeroplanes from an airline. Therefore, this year they need to produce at least 25 aeroplanes to meet the target. If x1 represents the number of green aeroplanes and x2 represents the number of red aeroplanes, then we can have x1 plus x2 greater than or equals to 25. That is, it is fine that the factory produces more than enough aeroplanes, but it cannot produce less than 25 aeroplanes this year. In order to rewrite this constraint into an equation, we shall subtract something non-negative from the left-hand side to make both sides equal again. This is called a surplus variable, and it is denoted by the letter E. If E is positive, it means that x1 plus x2 is greater than 25. The factory indeed produces more aeroplane than enough. If E is 0, it means x1 plus x2 equals to 25. That means the factory produces exactly 25 aeroplanes to fit the order. So in both cases, the original constraint is satisfied. However, on top of this surplus variable, we also have to add a non-negative variable A to left-hand side. This is due to a technical reason when we perform the simplest method. Roughly speaking, if we do not add this variable A, there will be complications in working out the simplest method. Thus, the variable is called artificial variable and is denoted with letter A. You may feel uncomfortable with this artificial variable, but later we will notice that it will have a value equal to zero when we reach the optimum point. Similar reasons apply to the situation when we have an equal to constraint. Then an artificial variable will also be added to the left-hand side of the constraint. So if we have 3x1 plus 2x2 equals to 25, where x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to zero, then we will add an artificial variables a1 into the left hand side to make this to be an equality again where these are greater than or equal to zero. Let's refer to the following example. We are asked to transform the following constraint set into a standard form. First, we observe that these constraint sets already fulfill requirement one, that is, the right hand side of the constraint is not negative. It also fulfills requirement 3. All the variables are restricted to non-negative values. What we need to do is to rewrite the constraint so that all the constraints are stated as equations. So, in this case, for the first constraint, we need to add a non-negative select variable S1. For the second constraint, we need to subtract a non-negative surplus variable E2 and add a non-negative artificial variable A2. I use the notation E2 and A2 to represent that they come from the second constraint. For the third constraint, we need to add another non-negative artificial variable A3. I use A3 to indicate that it comes from the third constraint. Now, this is in standard form with all the variables to be non-negative, with all the constraints written as equations, and the values at the right-hand side of the constraints are all non-negative. Please pause here and try example 1 and we shall discuss the answer afterwards. For example 1, we observe that among all the right-hand side values, there is one which is negative. Therefore, we can multiply both sides by negative 1 to make the right-hand side to be positive again. 
And also, we notice that all the variables here are not negative, so it satisfies requirements free now. Now, we want to modify all those inequalities and the equation by adding additional variables into each of the constraints. For the first constraint, we need to subtract a surplus and add one artificial variable. And for the second inequality, we also need to subtract another surplus and add another artificial variable. For the third inequality, we need to add a slack variable. And for the fourth equation, we need to add the third artificial variable. So all of these variables are not negative. All of the constraints are stated as an equation and all the right-hand side values are not negative. And we have already given the remark that the artificial variables have no real meaning in the problem, but they are added to provide a convenient starting point in the simplest problem. Recall that to solve a linear programming problem with the simplest method, one of the requirements we need is that all the variables are restricted to non-negative values. In the example shown here, we wish to rewrite each of the following constraint sets in standard form, incorporating all supplemental variables, so that they are ready to proceed with the simplest method. Let's take a look at the constraint set in part A. Apart from having inequality constraints instead of equations, which we have discussed how to deal with before, we also see that this time x1 is restricted to be non-positive. It doesn't fulfill the third requirement that all variables should be restricted to non-negative values. For the constraint set in part B, apart from having inequality constraints instead of equations, which we have discussed how to deal with before, we also see that x2 this time is unconstrained in sign. It can be positive, negative, or zero. This also doesn't fulfill the third criteria that all variables should be restricted to non-negative values. In the following video, we shall discuss how to rewrite these two constraint sets so that they fulfill all the three requirements stated here, so that they are ready to proceed with the simplest method.